Last time on transistors, we looked at not geeks. We went from a simulation to a schematic to an actual build on a breadboard. And yeah, we built our not gates. Today, we're going to be building an OR gate. That is the first time we're going into a territory in which, well, our gates take two inputs. As usual, we'll be building them with both NPN and PNP transistors. So we'll have a good chance to see how these two circuits actually differ. Without further ado, let's jump in to this episode of Transistors. Hello and welcome back to Transistors. Now, here's a very quick recap of what an OR gate does. The idea is, if we say X or Y needs to be true, then as long as either one is true, our whole statement is considered to be true. That's basically the idea, right? The truth table looks like this. The only condition that is false is the condition in which, well, both inputs are actually zero. In all other cases, the output must be true. That's as simple as it gets. With this in mind, let us go ahead and build our circuits. All right, let us begin by looking at the schematic for our PNP version of the OR gate. And yes, we are indeed starting with our PNP transistor version. And the reason is, well, it just makes it easier for us. In fact, as you can see, well, we just have our two transistors in series. And that's basically enough. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to begin by actually disconnecting our pole resistor. As you can see, no effect on the output. And of course, the reason is that our PNP transistors are sort of switched on by default. That is when the input is actually zero. As a result, there is a direct connection between our output and our ground. And that is why our output is showing us zero. Now, consider what happens when we actually toggle any one of these inputs. Let's start with X. Basically, toggling this cuts off our output from being able to touch the ground. And as a result, it goes floating. Same deal for the other input. In this case, we are cutting off the ground supply to our second transistor. Of course, what that means is, well, now this whole chunk becomes disconnected, right? This whole length of wire is now all floating. No matter what I toggle here, that doesn't matter because you have nothing going in at the collector. So yeah, essentially, well, that is how you do an OR gate. Of course, we will want to connect up our pull up resistor. And yeah, that is how you basically get the effect you want. As long as any one of the inputs are true, well, the output is going to become true as well. And that includes the case in which both inputs are true. The only time you're going to get a zero is when, well, both inputs are actually set to zero. With this idea in mind, let's move on to our schematic to see how everything sort of links together. So here's what everything is going to look like on our breadboard. Firstly, of course, well, we don't forget our power. So these will represent the power rails on our breadboard as usual. Then we're gonna bring in our two transistors. Now, basically, since this is sort of a series connection, the collector of the first transistor is just going to connect straight to the emitter. Of course, we are connecting the high side through a pull-up resistor. So nothing too special here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce our two buttons into the mix. Let's look at just one first. We are, of course, going to have to give our push button a little bit of power and make a connection over to the base of one of our transistors through a current limiting resistor. When the switch is open, this connection here at the base is pulled down to low. When the switch is closed, the high state comes in, right? It overrides that pull down, and as a result, your base goes high. Basically, repeat the same idea for the other base. And that basically represents our full transistor setup. Of course, we want to see our output, right? And that is why we also link up and LED to the mix. Of course, this positioning is deliberate, right? This is in accordance to the simulation we've seen just now. And in order to see how everything hangs together, let's see how the current actually flows. Now, when neither button is actually pushed down, 
basically what happens is, well, both of these transistors are actually like closed switches, right? That is how a PNP transistor behaves. When the base is low, the switch is closed. So as a result, your sort of low, your ground state basically moves in like so. Since both these switches are closed, the ground state is going to come right through, right? It's going to overpower the positive pull up over here. And as a result, the positive terminal of your LED is connected to ground. So is the negative terminal. Of course, your LED will not light up. So, well, this is our sort of usual neutral state. This is exactly as we expect. Now let's see what happens when we actually push down on one of our buttons. Of course, then the high state sort of comes true, right? It goes up to the base and that causes this transistor, right? This little switch to become open. Now, of course, our ground will no longer travel over like that. And as a result, what happens instead is that the high state from here will come on down through the pull-up resistor to the positive terminal of the LED. And as a result, our LED switches on. So yeah, that's basically the idea, right? This, of course, works in the exact same way if we were to use the other switch. Or both, if you so desire. The idea is as long as there is any break at all along these two transistors, then the positive terminal of your LED will no longer come in direct contact with ground. And as a result, the pull-up takes effect, lighting up the LED. So let's see this in action with our actual breadboard setup. So here is the actual setup on the breadboard. As you can see, well, I've tried to make my schematic look as close to this as possible. So our two transistors are right here. And well, of course, our two switches are here. The power rails come in at the top, which, well, I have currently disconnected. So let me just very quickly put this back. And with this in place, we are now able to control our LED using our two transistors acting as an OR gate. Now, each one of these are, of course, the different inputs. So if I were to press on this one, well, the LED lights up. And it does the same for the other switch as well. Of course, if I have both pressed down, that's fine, right? Of course, the LED also lights up. And it's only off when both switches are released. I guess this part is the hardest to see, but these two transistors are connected in series, the way we've seen earlier on in our simulation. In fact, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. So the reason why this works is on the breadboard, they're sharing the same column, right? I don't know if you can see this column where my finger is sort of hovering above. Because they're sharing the same column, the collector of the left transistor is connected to the emitter of the right transistor. And that's how they are sort of connected in series. The LED itself, which is kind of out of focus here, is basically pulling from the emitter, which is also connected to our high state through a resistor. So that would be our pull-up. And yeah, of course, the final collector over here is going back to ground, which, well, my wire is a bit long, which is why it actually connects here on the upper right. So yeah, that is basically, well, the same circuit as we've seen in our schematic, but now on a breadboard. And now on to our NPN version. As you can see, well, it's nowhere near as pretty because now our two switches kind of have to be connected in parallel, like this. Again, we're going to start by disconnecting our pull-down resistor first. And as you can see, because both inputs are actually set to zero, and as a result, our output is floating. As long as any one of the bases actually goes high, what happens is, well, the switch is closed, and the positive, you know, coming from the high state, is allowed to flow through. So your output takes on a high value. Of course, to handle the disconnected state, we are going to have to pull down to low. So the simulation is easy enough to understand, but now we're going to have to look at the schematic itself. Again, we will start off with our power rails and of course, our two transistors, which are now connected in parallel. Of course, they go back to ground through a pull down resistor. Then we bring in our two push buttons and each one of the push buttons will go to the basis of our two transistors. Of course, true current limiting resistors. 
hopefully you can identify that this is basically the whole chunk that will go high the moment any one of our transistors actually allows the high states to go through, right? And so in order to see our output, we simply connect our LED to any point along this line. So yeah, of course, in our usual low state, what is going to happen is since both of these are technically, you know, switches that are open, what's going to happen is the ground is simply going to come in through our pull down resistor. And as a result, our LED goes to the low state, right? It doesn't light up. However, when we actually press down one of the buttons, this base goes high, right? And because it does go high, it allows our high state to flow through. Actually, this whole part goes high, right? It doesn't just go straight to the LED, even though that's the only thing we have it connected to. At any rate, this whole part goes high, the pull down resistor sort of gets overpowered. So does the positive terminal of our LED. And as a result, the LED lights up. So yeah, with this picture in mind, we can now move on to our breadboard. And now for the NPN version, as you can see, it is kind of more complex. What I've done is I have my two transistors here, right? And I've put them sort of on opposite sides of the breadboard. This is to better mirror our diagram, right? Our diagram also sort of has it in this parallel manner that I'm trying to replicate here. So most of this is exactly as you would expect. The collector is on the left, it is fed simply by power, right, on both these lines. The bases are connected to our two switches, which seems to be popping off. And our two emitters will go back to ground through a pull-down resistor over here. So yeah, basically, well, any button press will switch the LED on. And there you go, those have been your OR gates. As you can see, well, the two different types of transistors allow you to create quite different looking circuits. We generally don't need both kinds of transistors in order to express any particular logic gate. But yeah, as you can see in this case, well, clearly one is more convenient than the other. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.